My name is Jeff. I've been a Google engineer for about two years now, working primarily on Beam and Dataflow, and more recently been pointing most of my efforts towards Beam YAML. So just a quick overview of what we'll talk about. I'll introduce what Beam YAML is, how to use it, some basic syntax. Then we'll turn over into current turnkey transforms. These will be like built-in transforms that you're able to use, plug and play with your pipelines. We'll go over briefly how you can implement custom transforms into your pipeline, although that is an advanced topic that's a little out of scope. And then finally, I'll wrap up with a demo uh, so you can see it in action and how to actually run your pipelines. So with that said, we'll introduce. So the problem we're trying to solve here is if anyone who's used Beam probably knows it's not the easiest tool to learn. We've made lots of efforts in creating new SDKs to bridge that gap for developers' language of choice. We have Python, Golang, TypeScript, and of course, the original Java. But this still requires knowing a programming language and knowledge of the Beam model. So even with these new SDKs, you still have that, that gap in, in Beam knowledge that doesn't really translate. Our next effort was Beam SQL. This was a way to help convert data engineers who were already familiar with the SQL syntax into the Beam world. This had performance limitations. It has problems with hotkeys and translations, but it you know it, it's it's one it's one method. And then finally, we have Dataflow templates. One of the limitations here is it's really only compatible with Dataflow Runner. Beam is supposed to you know bridge the gap across all runners. So that's, of course, a limitation. And it really only works if it matches your use case. If a PubSub to BigQuery template doesn't match your exact use case from PubSub to BigQuery, then it's really difficult to tweak the pipeline. It's really difficult to deploy a new template, um, especially for those that are not developers. So that's where Beam YAML comes in. It's an easier way to express your pipelines. YAML is a format that many people are already familiar with, or if they're not, it's a, a simple one to learn. It makes it easier to author and deploy intermediate pipelines. And when I say intermediate pipelines, I just mean something a little bit more complex than reading from a file and writing to another file, but maybe not as complex as some of the behemoths that we know are out there. But it makes it easier because you don't need to install an SDK. You don't need to install a development environment. You don't really need to know all the nuances of the Beam programming model, although you do need to know some of the basics, like key transforms um, and like how a pipeline is structured. And it's also, it's a lot easier to copy, modify, and share your pipelines. If you create a YAML snippet, you're able to share it with someone else, whether that's public, internal, whatever, and they can use that in their YAML pipeline. So it makes, you know, sharing with each other a lot easier. So the core goals of our design was to be schema first. Um, this means if anyone's familiar with Beam row, essentially a built-in data type for structured data. Think just like a row in any generic database. But we do want to allow for schemaless, so we don't want to lock it down to say you have to use schema, but any of the turnkey transforms, any of the built-in IOs will leverage this schema structure. We want to deliver other main Beam functionality. This means built-in IOs, windowing, turnkey transforms, anything that will make the experience easier. Robust error handling, we want to make sure that per transform, if there are any errors that occur in the transform, at least those supported by Beam YAML, that will have error handling that you can use to post-process any of those errors, write to another transform, or log them out, whatever, whatever you want to do with them. We want to make sure there's easy syntax. This means a transform may allow for complicated structures, like maybe I'm combining from multiple places, some complicated combined transforms, but then having a syntactic sugar where if I'm doing a really simple case, I don't have to worry about all that verbiage. Um, Built-in transforms and IOs, this means allowing or supporting any of the major IOs that we already support in native Beam and doing so interchangeably with Java and Python. Essentially, a transform can be implemented in Java or Python SDK, and the user is abstracted away from this. So the Beam YAML heuristic will determine the best SDK at runtime um, to make sure you get the best performance. Um, we also want to allow for code translation for getting started with Beam. So, you know, this is more of a stretch goal, but essentially you start with Beam YAML and then we'll have an easy roadmap to getting to more complicated cases where you would actually need Beam Java, Beam Python, um, or whatever language of choice. 
So with that in mind, let's go over some syntax so you can see what this looks like. Um, so a basic reading and writing YAML pipeline. So in this example, we're going to be reading from PubSub and writing to BigQuery. Um, so every pipeline starts with the pipeline tag. That's at the very top you'll see there. From there, if you specify chain, that means every transform you define in your pipeline will be chained one after the other. And we'll go over the other type that's supported shortly. So one of our syntactic sugars is defining a source and a sync. This is not required, as you'll see shortly, but it makes it a little bit more organized when you're trying to write your pipeline. So in this case, our source is of type reading from PubSub. And with any transform, you will have a config, and these are essentially your input parameters to the, to the transform. Um, so for read from PubSub, that might be your subscription uh, and then the schema. You know, because typically you're reading raw bytes from PubSub, so we want to have a way to turn it into a schema data structure to be able to parse easier throughout the pipeline. And then in this case, the sync is writing to BigQuery, where your config may be a table. Um, it could be a query, um, whatever else, but in this case, we're going with table. Um, so adding a transform. So in this case, we're using one of our turnkey transforms, uh, map to fields. This is how we map fields, essentially. So um, in this case, we're imagining that our, our row has fields name and age, and we want to do a little bit of processing on those before we write them out. So we're taking the name and we're uppercasing it, and then for the age, we're adding 20. So you can see that in the green there. Uh, and you know the details I'll get to a little bit later about these turnkey transforms, especially this one. Um, but the thing to note here is that transforms tag and every transform within that transform, in this case, we just have one, but every transform within there will be chained together um, between the two, the source and the sync. And again, each of those transforms will have a config. So taking this a step further, as I was saying, you know, you can chain multiple transforms. So we have our source and our sync. Um, and as I also said before, you're able to put all of your transforms under that transforms tag. The source and the sync is merely a syntactic sugar. But in this example, we're still using our read from PubSub, chaining it right into map to fields, chaining it right into our another turnkey transform called explode, um, and so on and so forth. You can keep chaining them together uh, until you eventually get to your sync. Another note, thing to note is your pipelines don't have to be linear. They don't have to chain into each other. Um, in this case, we took out that type chain tag underneath pipeline. And we're defining an actual more like a more complicated structure for our pipeline. So in this case, we have our read from PubSub still. Um, and you'll notice now every transform after that has an input. So in the case of our map one transform, its input is read from PubSub. And then we're also reading from Avro. So that's going to be another top level transform, another source. Uh, from there, we're going to join our output from map one and our output from read from Avro. Um, so you see, in this case, we have type join with our inputs being map to fields and read from Avro. And that's actually a typo. This map to fields should say map one next to left. So I'll make sure to edit that before sharing the slides. But anyway, you can see how it's possible to define a more complicated structure. You could have any number of inputs, any number of intermediate transforms, any number of sinks. Um, so there's full flexibility to build whatever shape you, you need for your use case. So as we said, we wanted to make sure we included sophisticated error handling. So in this case, you can see there may be some sort of error when we're mapping our fields. Maybe there's a new field that comes in from PubSub that we weren't expecting, or maybe we're dividing two, row, two integer rows by each other and we get a division by zero error, something like that. Um, we want to have a way to post-process those errors without just failing the pipeline. Uh, in this case, our, our pipeline author has chosen just to write those out to a JSON. And you can see in the syntax here, underneath the config for the mapping, we have an error handling tag. Most, if not all, of our turnkey transforms will support this error handling tag so that if you're using a Beam YAML built-in transform, you will be able to redirect your error handling or your error output for any transform. And there is currently only one field, and it's the output. So what do we want the name of our output collection to be? In this case, just errors, see bolded in red. And then our writing to JSON writes those errors out. Also, you'll see it's bolded in red. So we have our name of transform, 
again, apologies, this should say map1.errors because we named our transform map1. But anyway, you're you're taking the map1 errors, you're piping it into this write to JSON and writing them out. You could do something more complicated like piping it into a different mapping or some other transform to post-process and then pipe it back into write to BigQuery. Um, but this is just an example, uh, one way to handle your errors. And then another rather recent feature is the ability to templatize, as we call it, your YAML pipeline. So essentially, if anyone's familiar with data flow templates, as I mentioned before, it's a way to create a generic pipeline that you're expecting other users to, to use and leverage with some of the fields or some of the parameters being passed in by the users. So in this case, we may have a read from PubSub writing to BigQuery template, uh, but in between, we want to do some sort of filter. So you can imagine in this case, there might be a field named age, and the user gets to decide what age they're filtering for. So when they would run this pipeline, they would pass, pass in threshold as a parameter to the run command, and it would allow them everywhere where you see those double curly braces, it would fill in the threshold for the age. Um, and likewise, there may be a parameter table prefix for naming the output table of your BigQuery table. This is just a small example. Jinja is out of scope of this talk, but any Jinja 2 syntax is fully supported um, within Beam YAML to make templatizing your pipelines as easy as possible. Um, so now that you know a little bit of syntax, uh, how do we actually run these things? There are two ways to do it locally, which you know could leverage the direct runner if you're just prototyping and testing. This unfortunately does require installing a dev environment, but fairly lightweight one. Essentially, you would just need to install Python and install Beam on top of that. Um, and then you would run that command, that second command there. And there are two different ways to pass in your pipeline. You could do either the pipeline file, which will be a path to the actual YAML file, or it could be just dash dash YAML pipeline. And you could put in the raw YAML text um, straight into the command. Because we want to provide a way for users to use this without develop, without the downloading a development and setting up a development environment, we wanted to make sure, like I said, there was an easier way. So that's that first command there. If you're running on Dataflow, you're able to submit using this new gcloud command, uh, gcloud dataflow yaml run. And then you're able to specify either a yaml file locally on your file system or up in GCS. So yep, those are the two main ways to run it. Of course, Beam YAML being a YAML structure could be built upon by any third-party tooling, uh, opening the possibilities up to numerous ways of running it. Uh, I could foresee this being leveraged by Terraform, um, maybe even Apache Air Airflow, but that's out of scope. Okay, so supported transforms. So these are going to be your built-in Beam YAML transforms. I'm not going to go over every single one. We have a lot of IOs, so any of the file IOs or big ticket databases, so MySQL, um, BigQuery, as well as some third party like Apache products, you know, Kafka, working on some others, but uh, you can see a full list there at that link. So those are the IOs, read and write. Uh, as well as other turnkey transforms. So we wanted to not only provide a way to read and write your data from place to place, but also allow you to do some sort of transformation. This won't cover every use case, but we think it's a pretty robust uh, first subset of transforms to allow you to actually do some serious data processing. Some notable ones are combined. This is going to be your one-stop shop for aggregation. So like I said, I'm not going to go over the syntax for all of these, but Essentially, that one will allow you to do like summing of fields, you know, any any sort of combined function you could think of in order to do aggregations. Map to fields, we touched on a little bit already. It allows you to, you know, rename fields, um, do some sort of essentially lambda if you're familiar with Python, or you know, lightweight function on top of said fields. Filter is another notable one. We kind of looked at it. It allows you to filter on a field. So like maybe you have a field named age. I can say like age greater than some value. SQL, 
So as we talked about really early on in the presentation, there is this SQL transform already implemented in Beam Java. And so Beam YAML wanted to leverage that for those familiar with SQL to be able to put in a SQL statement and you know do their data transformation that way. But for those that don't, aren't familiar with SQL or don't want to mess with its limitations, we're starting to implement some of the basic transforms like join um, or map to fields would you know translate to some SQL as well as filtering translates to SQL. So we're trying to cover those bases there. And finally, we're working on some of the ML capabilities. So ML transform, eventually run inference, things like that. All right, so going back, as I promised to look at map to fields, this is one of our more robust transforms. I just wanted to go over a quick example of how to use it. So in this example, we have the that top CSV there or table with the fields, my old num, my old string, and my old name. Uh, in this case, we want to remap all of those to new names, as well as for a couple of them, we will do some actual transformations to them. So like with any transform, you're going to have a config. And within the config of map to fields, you will have the fields that you're manipulating and then a language. So we support Python and Java right now, fully supported. JavaScript is experimental um, and may be deprecated in the future. So I would stick to Python or Java. And then from there, we have our fields that we're going to be mapping. So in this case, we're just doing a really simple remapping of my old string to my new string. That means all the values in my old string will be copied right on over. We're just renaming the column name. In the my new num case, we're using a callable. So that's one way to express your data transformation on the field. In this case, we're giving it some sort of Python callable. This could be a Lambda. This could be a full function declaration. But essentially, you just want to define what we're actually doing to each row. So that callable will take in the full row. In this case, it would be the my old num, my old string, my old name for each of the three values. And then in this case, we're, we're taking my old num and we're multiplying it by two. So if you take a look at the my old num versus my new num, you'll notice each value got multiplied by two. And then finally, we have my new name. This takes advantage of the last way to manipulate these fields, which is using, using some sort of UDF file. If you've played around with templates, you should be familiar with this concept. But essentially, you provide a file and a name of a function within that file. And this will operate on each row, kind of similar to callable. So in this case, we have a function to uppercase, which, as you can imagine, will uppercase each of the values. So if you look at my old name, we have John Jane. Apache Beam, and then in my new name, we have the same values, but uppercased. Full docs are at that link there. Like I said, these slides will be shared. So you know, if you want to play around with some more complicated syntax, definitely check out those docs. So like I said, I want to talk briefly on how to implement custom transforms. Um, that's a question we get a lot. While we do have turnkey transforms, inevitably, there's going to be users that love the idea of using Beam YAML, its simple syntax, its extensibility and shareability, but have use cases that aren't fulfilled by these transforms. Because of that, every transform already built in and any custom transform that a user wants to provide will be using what we call a provider. So this is a concept within Beam YAML that essentially is our way of providing a transform to the SDK or to the BMML framework. So when someone provides a when someone defines a provider, they are essentially pointing the SDK or the framework to the location of a P transform that's already been packaged, whether it be a Python package in PyPy, a Java jar, um, a Maven target, Gradle target, whatever it may be, or even inline. So raw Python and pointing to it. No matter the case, we provide this framework so that you can insert those transforms into your pipeline. So these are fully doc documented on the Beam site for Python specifically. And then for those who are curious on how do I create a custom Java transform that's compatible with Beam YAML and define it as one of these providers, I included a link there to a GitHub repository that is a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do just that. And another thing I should note is we do support Java and Python transforms um, because, like I said, the SDK does a good job of 
determining at runtime which implementation it should use per transform. Um, so if you create a transform in Java and Python and provide both, then it will um, decide at runtime which one it should use in order to increase performance. So that was a lot of talking about a provider, but what does it actually look like? This is an example here of a Java jar provider. So you can see maybe I have a read from PubSub, right to BigQuery pipeline, and I want to do some intermediate transform that isn't already covered by the turnkey transforms. So I have my custom transform, and this was defined by, and you'll see the providers tag below. I have, in this case, type Java jar, also with a config, which in this case is just pointing to my jar. This could be GCS path, local path, it could be hosted on a custom endpoint, but it just needs to be a path to some Java jar that contains your package transform. And then you need to have to, you needed to have defined an urn within that transform in order to package it in the first place. So this part is just asking for that urn so that it knows where to look within that jar. So you see bolded in that dark purplish blue color, the my custom transform. You could have multiple transforms within that Java jar, in which case you would have a list down there, um, each with their own unique urn, and you could use them all within your pipeline. So this is a complicated use case, but just wanted to point out that there is a way to implement and include your own custom transforms. Okay, so I wanted to do a demo instead of just looking at slides. So, and I have linked all the resources that I'm gonna show in the slides. But first up, I just wanted to point out our trying Beam YAML notebook. So this is like an intro guide to running some simple pipelines and the steps that are necessary in order to do so. So like with any example, we need to first install the SDK. Should already be installed, cool. For this example, and I'm not gonna go over every example, but they all leverage this people.csv file. So this is just a collection of random people, each with an ID, a name, age, country, and profession. So you can see that on our file system, we have that file. So our first YAML pipeline, we're just going to read that CSV file that we wrote and then log it out to the console. So you can see our pipeline here. So running that, that Python command that I showed earlier, we should get a full CSV. So logs look a bit funky, but essentially you have a CSV type structure here or a beam row type structure um, for every entry in that CSV. But of course we want to do more than just write out to the console. So looking at another example, we'll apply the filter transform. And for each of those people in our file, we're gonna look for any that are greater than or equal to 18 years old. So creating that pipeline and running. You can now see that none of the ages are below 18. And I promise I've verified this and it works. And then I wanted to go over one last example a lot of these build on things we talked about in the slides, but I wanted to point out uh, a nonlinear pipeline. So we talked a lot about chaining, but I wanted to show what it looks like to create one that's not chained. In this case, we call it composite. This type composite is completely optional. This is the default behavior. So as long as you don't specify a chain, it will default to using this composite structure. So going off of this visual above, let's say we have some sort of input data, in this case from a CSV file, we want to filter out all the doctors and write those out to a file. And then for all other professions, we wanna write that out to a separate file. So let's step-by-step, step, we have our pipeline, type composite. For each transform, we will define the name of the transform, the type, and then its config. So reading from CSV, in this case, we have one parameter path. Where is the CSV? In this case, it's in the folder data named people CSV. We'll then do a simple filter for the doctors. In this case, our input is that named input data from above. And similar to map to fields, it expects a language unless you're doing really simple mapping or simple filterings, which I think this would qualify, but for 
completeness, we just specify the language here. And in this case, if the profession is equal to doctor, we're going to filter that out into its own separate P collection. Likewise, we're taking in the input data for other professions, checking to make sure it's not equal to doctor, and we'll write that out to a separate P collection. Finally, we have our two write to CSVs. In this case, our input is doctors. In this case, it's the other professions. And in both cases, we're, we're writing out to a CSV file in these paths. So running that. So we wrote out to doctors 0000 0001, and same for other professions. So looking at the first couple lines of both those files, you'll see all the ones in the doctors are doctor, all the ones in other are some other profession. So those are just some simple examples to show the process in which you would download Beam and install the necessary requirements and then eventually write and run your pipeline. I wanted to show off the gcloud way of doing things as well so i have an editor here all right so i've already taken the liberty of copying over this word count example which you can find in our examples repo um, and i'll point you to a link to that later but essentially if you open the beam docs or done our equivalent of hello world you've heard of word count at this point basically we're reading in a text file we're going to map out all the unique words and then count them so that'll be our aggregation so for each word we'll we'll have a count and then in this case we are writing to a csv uh, in a gcs bucket so all right i'm going to start with running the python command just to make sure that everything's working All right, so our pipeline ran. So everything's really small. Everything should be written out to output. So we see it here, timestamp to make sure I'm not lying. And we can look, make sure that looks good. So, yep, as expected, we have each unique word in our document and the count, the number of times that it's in there. Let me delete that before proceeding. All right. So now let's do the exact same pipeline, but this time we'll run with the gcloud command. So the gcloud command is nifty because it allows you to use the local file system path. So in this case, it's just in, I'm already in the working directory. It's named wordcount.yaml, but the gcloud command does leverage the YAML template. So anyone familiar with data flow templates will be able to log on data flow and see that there's now a YAML template option. But this command comes in handy because it allows you to specify a path that's not in GCS. So like I'm doing here, I'm just specifying the local file wordcount.yaml. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. So it created my job. So we can see here that it's starting up. It does take a little bit to start up. So in an effort to just show you what it looks like, um, here's one I ran earlier. So you can see it's got all the stages that we would expect and ran successfully. And it, yeah, and it writes out CSV to GCS, but I, I just deleted that file, so it's no longer there. But we can check back on it uh, later, make sure it wrote out. And then one last thing I just wanted to point out, while you can use the local file path, you can also use a GCS bucket. Um, so in this case, I have stored the file here in this input folder, and I'm pointing to it here in my gcloud command, and I can run it that way as well if I rename it to a different job name. And there we go. We have a second job. 
they do take a, a couple minutes to start up. Like I said, it leverages the template. Um, and with any flex template, it takes a couple minutes to start up before you see the graph. But once it's there, it has as good a performance as any Python or Java pipeline you might run, depending on, again, like which heuristic it uses. It tends to use the Java implementation because most of our IOs and transforms are implemented in Java. But if you were leveraging just Python transforms, then it would run just as fast as a Python. And yeah, so that, and there we go. There's our, there's our graph. So that's my quick demo. Like I said, I want to point out some other documentation to check out. So we have the Beam YAML docs up on the Beam Apache website. We have the Getting Started Notebook I've linked here, or can be found on the GitHub. Our examples catalog can also be found on the GitHub. I can pull that up. But this is essentially just a collection of pre-built YAML files that are runnable as they are. For example, the word count example that I pulled out you're able to run this as is, and you should get the same output as um, these expected blocks down at the bottom. So that's our examples catalog. We have plenty of examples of the different transforms, all of our aggregations. This could be, like I said, any anything that'll use a combine. So counting, finding the max, the sum, per key, things like that. And then we also have our other element-wise examples. So using the explode transform, filter map to fields. And we'll have more examples using IOs to come. So keep an eye on that. There we go. So that's the examples catalog. And finally is, as I mentioned earlier with the providers, we have a way to, we have a tutorial for showing you how to create custom Beam Java transforms and how to provide them to the Beam YAML framework. So that's hosted on a GitHub with step-by-step -step guide on how to do so. So check that out if you're interested.